Hey, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just, just had to give me a second. I was just moving things. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of things I could say, but really what I want to get into, though, is that I think you do a lot of appealing to authority as it pertains to the early church. And uh, to me, this is problematic because th this is only valid if their authority is valid. And yeah. when you start Obviously, mentioning... I assume, right, I assume that their authority is valid, correct? Yeah, well, you know, do you agree with everything, you know, anyone said, if they're a church father, do you agree with all the canons, you know, throughout the ecumenical councils? Is there anything that you I mean, have that's any... Not, that's not our position. So that's a that's a uh, straw man. No, we don't believe that well, everything... Well, so. what, do you, what do you mean, though? Because the point is that if they have the authority to decide the proper interpretation, then you can't pick and choose which ones are correct and which ones are wrong. You must accept them all. So that's why I'm asking, is there anything that you find to be no, wrong? Because, again, that's not, that defeats that's, not our, the fact. that's not our position that you have to accept all of the church fathers and all of their teachings. So we think that there's kind of tiers of authority. So there's ecumenical councils, which are the highest authority, and those you do have to believe and accept. Um, when the church fathers do teach unanimously on a topic, then that would be considered authoritative. But if, you know, for example, Augustine is a... Uh, speculating about something in the bible or if chris is some speculating about what this verse in revelation means they can be wrong about those things okay all right so that that actually makes sense to me uh i do under uh, i think i understand that at least but in pertaining to the one guest that was on when i first had joined i don't know like 20 minutes ago uh i, I really felt like that was really your support is that you were like appealing to them as an authority but but again if but you hold well but well, let me finish but again but if you hold that not everything they say is true well then we're talking about something that's just beyond authority and what i don't think you gave a lot of was going to be really precise for you and explain that they were talking about the formation of the biblical canon and why would we accept the bible as true and i'm saying that you can't divorce it from the historical attestation and compilation of the church. And so I'm going to be very precise for you. The Carthaginian canons of the early Latin church are eventually accepted in the East at the Trollo Quintessex Synod, which is then accepted at the sixth and seventh ecumenical councils. Those are the, are the decisions of the books that would go into the Bible for the Orthodox church in the first seven centuries of Christianity. So I'm being very precise in what I meant when I was telling that dude that oral tradition is also authoritative for us. It's not an amorphous made up thing that everything that a church father said is part of oral tradition. I'm okay, talking yeah. specifically in that case about the how this book comes to, to be put together. Yeah, so I, I actually wasn't talking about that. Um, I agree with that and I'm thankful for all the work that they did that uh, the led up to a canon that I think certainly was. Now, what I was talking about is in specifically to the relationship between God, the Holy Spirit and the Son and even more specifically about propitiation. Um, uh, that's what I, what I meant when I was saying that I think okay. that really you were holding to these specific interpretations put out by church fathers, which aren't necessarily no, no, I, I uh, true according to what the, the scripture New says. I don't think the New Testament teaches us so. Are you gonna let him finish a sentence? <laughs> yeah, I know, it's kind of tough. I'm trying to save the, the time of going way off into- Well, it's nobody's fault that you've been through this before. You're hosting a live, people uh, come I, in and out. Yeah, Just I because you've really, talked about it I before, mean, doesn't I'm, mean I'm that gonna, all of us have heard it. So if he has a well, position gonna, that he wants to present myself. to you, you should let him at least finish his statement. Well, he needs to get to the point and make the argument and you'll go to you, we'll go to you next. So don't interrupt or I'll boot you. Oh my God, you're gonna boot me, I'm so afraid. Like. I'm just saying, not, like, I mean, I, I don't care. You, I don't care. Just because you use a lot of big words doesn't mean that you can immediately skip to the end of what you think he's going to say. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, I, I I literally think that because I'm using big words, I can skip. That's not what I think. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to save yeah, time so and explain the points. That's it. No, I understand. It would be nice if you if you let me finish though at times. Um, I get it, and I do the same thing. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to say that in any type of high ground. Okay, we'll get to get to uh, what so, your point is about whatever you're. Yeah. So so listen. Well, well, first off, I'm not a trinitarian. Okay, and let's I'll just clear the air with that. And and so the problem that I have on many of these hairs that I think you were splitting is based on theology that is extremely complex. 
I mean, throughout the centuries, you've literally developed a new language in order to explain these types of concepts. So it matters to me when you in assert one interpretation is but correct what is based on some authority that you don't even accept unilaterally across the board. Oh, okay, I made that's it why it must correct. come down to what scripture says and what is logically coherent. So again, if I speak to you and make the point, we're going to address that point. We're not going to run off to let you give your spill. Why don't you just say from the outset, I'm an anti-Trinitarian. So people play these games where they want to talk around and just get to your point and make your anti-Trinitarian arguments. And then he went back to saying that, oh, you unilaterally accept all these people's authority. I, I just told you in what sense we do and don't accept it. Furthermore, even if a whole other language is created, what does that have to do with whether it's true or false? So what? I'll let you back in, but I will interrupt. None of that has anything to do with whether it's true or false. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, I, I don't understand why you had to kick me for that. I thought my point was pretty clear. Because you just it's... rambled on and you don't let me object to what you're saying. It's not yeah. a monologue. So you, no. you totally can object to what I'm saying. No issue with that. Yeah, um, but ju yeah. but just yeah. kicking someone who's trying to make a point and the saying they didn't make a point. What's you know. your point, bro? Okay, so uh, I, again, I, I thought I had stated it that my initial issue has to do it. with how you know what your like how you know your interpretation is correct. I okay. addressed your authority objection. Okay, all right. So then let's no, just go ahead and move on. Uh, fine, then I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, so question: Do you believe that the Trinity is beyond human comprehension? If by comprehension you mean exhaustive definition, yes. Okay, why? Because God is God, that's why. Okay, saying God is God is not actually explaining anything. Okay, what do you mean? I mean, it's the Flesh biblical explanation of what Paul says. But, well, but listen, you need to be specific because I may agree with you in some things, but that doesn't win the argument. Like, you I've can say God is eternal. I've been specific all night long. I'm happy to be specific. Well, I'm just, let me give you an example. So if someone says God is eternal, you can't comprehend something that's eternal as a finite being. Certainly I'd agree with that, but God could be one God, not a Trinity and still be eternal. So that's not exclusive to the Trinity. That's so if I ask, why is the Trinity just, beyond human just, comprehension? You can't just appeal to anything, right? I'm just explaining a basic principle of apophatic theology. That's it. Just that there's a sense in which God transcends what we know about God, and also that he condescends to speak to us through what we call analogical predication. So like if we say God is merciful or God is just or God is holy, those are analogical terms that match up to God but don't exhaust God. That's all I meant. Okay, so is, is there any other reason, or is that solely it for why the Trinity is beyond well, human many, comprehension? Many why the Trinity. I could give you textual reasons, and I can give you philosophical reasons for the Trinity. Either yeah, that would be awesome. Let's let's hear some textual ones. That would be great. Right. So throughout the Old Testament, you have probably dozens of references, which you see in, me use in all my Muslim debates that show even in the Old Testament, distinct usage of Yahweh for the angel of the Lord, who's another one sent by the Father. Then you also see the presence of the Holy Spirit throughout dozens of texts in the Old Testament identified as a distinct person. So that's an Old Testament teaching that the Trinity is the case. And if you watch my first 15 minutes of the Daniel Hikachu debate, I go through five modern Jewish scholars that admit that first and second century Judaism was not monolithically Unitarian, but admits a Trinity. So essentially what, if I had to sort of summarize, you're saying that there are, you know, different things in the Old Testament with the Holy Spirit and, and Christophanies and... Dozens of passages that teach Yahweh the angel that he sends in whom is sends in whom is his name and who is worshiped as divine for example yahweh turns his face to gideon yahweh appears to as, as the angel of the lord to samson and manoah and this is a distinct person from persons from the father okay so why is that beyond human comprehension i'm just giving you examples of the trinity yeah, no, I'm, I'm wondering why it's beyond human comprehension. The mode of God's existence and his essence is beyond human comprehension, but there are other aspects of God which come down to us which we can comprehend. 
okay so by mode i mean you're not a modalist though i, I don't believe right you, yeah right mode so I, i'm not entirely sure what you mean by that though. Mode just refers to the way a thing is nothing it's not modalism okay so listen the issue that i'm having is because if you can describe something that can be comprehended, all of the powers, you you have to be able to engage. The problem is with the scriptures, not with me, because I gave you a whole bunch of examples of a distinct person throughout the Old Testament. So you don't believe that, right? No, I I believe all of scripture. There's no problem with that at all. Okay, the angel is the angel of the Lord Yahweh. No, an angel of the Lord is an angel. Can you imagine that? It's an angel. That's what the text says. Okay, you have way other issues too when we start to talk about Melchizedek. And other, dude, you know, all right. You understand? Yeah, all right. Oh, good. An ad hominem attack. Know what that's the word angel means. That's great. You don't even know okay. what the word angel means. Yeah, okay. You understand so, it, just means, it just means messenger. Did you know that? Yeah, I understand it means messenger, but it, so it, it can also be, can, it, it's can also be a, a being that is distinct from both man that's and God. Messenger. Okay. Can you listen, man, or I'm going to boot you? Listen, you've come an angel, so many times. Right, you, my you, bad. So listen, you, you're, this is so stupid. The word angel can be a created or a divine or an uncreated messenger. It does not just mean a creature. Your assumption when you hear the word angel is that it only refers to a created being. That's why I gave you the example of Yahweh turning his face, face to Gideon. The angel of the Lord is called Yahweh and turns his face to Gideon. The angel is the messenger, the messenger of the covenant. It could be a creature or it could be the son of God. But you won't, you, you couldn't listen because you have no idea what you're talking about. No, I, I have, listen, we've already dealt with like endless Muslim objections. So you're just saying I have no patience. But I've been here, are, if people are not going to listen to the explanations, then there's no point. It's, it's just, it, this is a word concept fallacy. He doesn't even know what that is. That's why people are bitching about philosophy. Well, maybe you need to know some philosophy. Maybe it would help you not make a lot of these mistakes.